<laughs> uh, hello, my babies. I just moved and and I just had the shower. And look at my... And look, look, look. It's awesome. And, and also, also, look. Mm. It's an awesome place. And thing is, I've had... It's this manifestation and two other manifestations happening today. <laughs> and I'm so happy about this and I want to record this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to record this video for all of my babies out there. Four manifestations happening and advice for manifestations where you're going right, where you're going wrong, if you're going. <laughs> and just anything that wants to come through for your manifestations. And I just want to show you that I kind of want to tell you one of these manifestations was the moving. Obviously, this was this took longer than one day. Then the other two manifestations were going to a, a certain restaurant today that I, I wanted to go to for a very long time. And the third manifestation was rose quartz bracelet and red. I just want it red. And this is coral. So maybe these are synchronicities for some of y'all. Mars. I just heard Mars. Mars. Red coral. Mars. <laughs> so let's go into the readings. All right, my baby darlings. Welcome to your reading. You're just the first... Well, you were attracted to the first rose, which is the red rose. So for you... And, and notice it's the, the rose that came with... Um, I don't know the term for it. This. <laughs> With leaves and uh, and this, <laughs> y'all know what I mean. So immediately root chakra and power, and also sensuality and sexuality. It's passion. It's something about passion. Whether this passion is strictly about sex or more and I sense that it is more than just sex it is passion in all areas of life and it's about living life with passion not just because of survival and this is when your root chakra bonds because like many people say the root chakra is the chakra which deals with survival but no it's it's more than that it's power it's personal power when you're in survival mode You'll know what what happens. It's it's just survival mode. No, we're not supposed to be in that. We're supposed to be in abundance. And just a lot of passion, baby. A lot of passion. Blood, blood nature for you. Just blood nature, baby. You can use blood ma magic, obviously, your own blood. No one else's. Your own blood. You can cut yourself a little bit as much as you feel comfortable and use that blood to just use it in some of your spells obviously as long as that intention goes with the benefit of everyone with the benefit of all beings you're pure now this goes so well together red and green Anahata Kali. Oh, by the way, yes, for you, it's uh, the Kali Oracle because this is just, this calls for it. Like roses are, roses are my flowers. 
Everyone knows that roses are the flowers of the mother goddess, of Devi, of the divine feminine, but red, red is just me, me, Kali, blood. So as I said, blood, blood, power, blood, magic, and a lot of abundance going in for you. You can pour some of your blood on, on the ground, on the earth. And use that. If you're working with flowers, by the way, you can use that. When you're planting a new flower in the pot, you're planting it in. You can put a drop of your blood there. Again, if you're comfortable with this. Only if you are comfortable with this. I personally wouldn't cut myself. <laughs> and maybe at some point in my life I will get into this. Into blood magic, but... Mm, at this point, I, I just wouldn't cut myself. But I felt like saying those things. <laughs> now, I sense that you are very much able to detach yourself. To just detach. And this is a key to manifestations. I suppose you know that. If you don't know that, your manifestations go extremely well when you detach. And it's a message of you connecting to your multidimensionality. There is something so powerful about your multidimensionality. And with that, you're meant to manifest so much abundance for you, darling. Or darlings. So much abundance. And there's a thing with... You, you see me in my avatar as Matangi. In my Matangi dimension. There's one thing that I love most, the, the freedom of the spiritual practice. For me, there are no certain spiritual practices, no certain type of spiritual practice. Whatever you find right for you, whatever suits you, whatever... However you feel to express yourself spiritually, that's the way. That's the way of your spiritual practice. And again, I sense with this ritual, blood ritual. But it doesn't have to be... Obviously, it's more powerful when it's pouring of blood. Also, dance, music, arts, knowledge... Me as Matangi, I am the Mahavidya form of Saraswati, the goddess of wisdom. But it's not just, you know, how some people would perceive wisdom. I am the alive wisdom, the wisdom of life, the wisdom of blood, the wisdom of movement. I am Shakti. And as you can see, Chamunda, this is... I, I I wouldn't say favorite card because I don't really uh, but but I can I would kind of say my favorite card from this deck. It is my favorite card from this deck. I just love this depiction of my I love it. I love how the artist depicted me in this card. It's splendid. Again, blood. So a vision of blood, the dimension of blood, the joy of blood, the voice of life is yelling within you to break free and to abund, to live abundantly. This is the message. I feel like not ending it here. Write. Write your manifestations if you're into that. If you're not into that, visualize them or sing them. You can use song to, to manifest or dance or sex. 
And with this, I'll, I'll end the message here. For personal messages and further working with me, you know what to do. My contact is in the description. I love you, babies. Oh, by the way, I knew it. I knew it. I forgot. This is the rest of the deck. And this was the bottom of the deck energy, Dakshina. Kalaratri. This talks about justice being done there where there has been some injustice. There will be justice being done. And look, Kamala Devi. So there's abundance for you. There's a lot of abundance, baby, and beauty. Beauty, beauty, beauty. I haven't done the reading for the pink, but... I think you may be also attracted to the pink one. Or ones. You have a lot of energies present. A lot of entities for, from higher dimensions being with you and serving you and being able to help you at this time. I sense that you've allowed yourself to tune in more freely to this help, which is so very good. And... Right now, as you're watching this reading, a lot of the divine timing is coming into place. It's as if the... It's one of the two things. Either... Or, if it is about two people, if you're thinking about you and someone else, it's... Um, one of you is in one of these situations and the other is in the other one. But if... You're only talk, thinking about yourself. It's either, it's one of these two situations. So it's either someone who's been in a sleep up until lately and now waking up and they've had a really kind of brutal waking up, but very effective and they've been through some really tough challenges and some kind of a strong battle which put them in their place, kind of, which made them realize the higher forces in this whole scheme of existence. And the second case is the one of someone who's been in... Um, you realized where where you are going wrong in some kind of a sleep, but not like a sleep, more like a, a situation where you wanted to act, but couldn't. For some reason, you couldn't. And right now, that whole thing has been removed. And you can do it. thing is, these two cards... Lately, I have seen these two cards whenever I, I've used this deck. And it's very beautiful that they came right to Chamunda. Me, in my Chamunda form, I also rule the sacred erection. Again, we were talking about sexuality, passion, manifestation. And in the Arta of Kali card, there's a depiction of the Divine Masculine, of Shiva. And Artha mean, means what we give to the world, the service we give to the world, what we offer. And I sense that now, whew, this baby, this, see? You've been awakened. You've been awakened to higher powers, to your power of manifestation and you, fire, 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 baby. Work with fire gods, Agni, Horus, Ra, just fire, fire, and Mars energy, Mars energy, you are going to do it. Whatever you've been waiting for and that very manifestation which, is, which depends on you. 
on on all of your forces don't don't use all of your forces in a kind of capricornian way where you have to just work 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 and exhaust yourself no use your force in a martial way in a way of boom baby a, a spark of energy a lot of energy a burst of energy life again a burst of life but then you're able to relax you're able to say Phew, okay i put energy in this now i'm able to relax so it's a, a thing of um, alternating between them use your action use your time to to invest into what you want to achieve and to give conscious thought to it and action as well not just thought but do allow yourself to relax as well you've done the work you've done a lot of work lately just a lot of it a lot of it i feel you i feel you just a lot of it so much work that whoa 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 that's why I say, don't use the Capricornian energy with this one. Use the martial energy, which goes fast now. But then, okay, I did it. Okay, a break. <laughs> okay, baby, so this has been the reading. Know that, no, again, that very manifestation, which seems impossible, is happening. You just have to... Put some drive, some action into it, but passionate action. Passionate action. Some would call it inspired action. Just passionate action. Not work because of the sake of work. No. When you don't feel like working, don't work. And when you don't have inspiration for service, don't. Don't offer anything. <laughs> But when you do have that inspiration, when you do have that spark, when you do have that drive, go for it, baby. Go for it because it's happening. I love you so much. You're beautiful, shining, amazing, and abundant, baby. So go shine and come shine. Hello, my beautiful, beautiful babies. Welcome to your reading. You are attracted to the beautiful white rose. It smells so nicely. If you can see, it's got little bugs in it on the petals. I, I don't know their names. They are just, just flower bugs. And I sense with this that it's about life. It's about hosting life somehow. You could be coming mothers or parents soon. <laughs> or just your... Now, again, when I say soon, don't think it's necessarily three months. In a divination reading, soon just means in this lifetime. <sighs> but the you already are a mother you already are a mother and I am with you I the divine mother am with you You've got the card saying, I am with you. Always. Protection of the winged mother. I feel so well. I feel so, so well, so, so well. Oh yeah, and those of you wondering, these are my legs and I don't give a single anything because this is how my body wants to be and I'm not going to mutilate by my body in any kind of way, even if that means shaving because shaving is mutilating yourself. Now, your reading is about abundance. 
Mother of Life, Nourishment of the Golden Grain Mother. Interestingly, I want to mention that I I had some what's it called? Ah, anyways, I had some pizza today, and pizza has grain like flour is made out of grains so if lately you oh I, I keep getting this thing of motherhood and just you know those kind of cravings that you have when you're a mother when you're pregnant if you are pregnant listen to those cravings even if they seem weird or somehow sometimes you may be craving things which aren't quite that healthy, you know, like things which contain gluten. I'm not saying eat it daily, but if, if you've been really, really craving it lately, just go for it. You can offer yourself that that cheat day that one cheat day and and just spoil yourself a little bit it's okay it is okay baby trust me it's okay you won't feel it <laughs> and besides this that this is a thing there's a lot of healing for you a lot of healing on all sides and a lot of healing did you see the orbs <laughs> there <laughs> A lot, a lot of spiritual presence and presences. And I am very grateful for this, for them. And I just want to extend my gratefulness to you who's listening to this. For I am grateful for you too. And maybe this is a message for you too, to be grateful. To remind yourself what being grateful is. Even... As I was giving you that example with the pizza, being grateful for that, even if it's not the healthiest of things, you're being grateful for the fact that you allowed yourself to have a taste of that will still propel you on some further manifestations of healthy things. So this is not a time to abstain yourself in any kind of way. This is a time to abund, to nourish yourself. Nourish yourself, baby, nourish yourself. It's like, it's like the milk of the mother. Golden grains of the Holy Mother. It's a thing of, oh, I have the feeling this reading is going to be long. <laughs> it's a thing of, just just imagine yourself somewhere in the open space, like the open space of space, of the cosmic space, and allow yourself to flow, to go with the flow through the planets, to abound with the cosmic juice. And just there where your heart goes, where your roots are calling you, where your body is going towards that sun you're seeing right now, that light you're seeing right now, Flow with it, abide in it, bathe in it, and baby, you will feel it. Oh. oh, this is so beautiful. Back in ancient Egypt, they knew about me, Sirius, where I, the Divine Mother, am incarnate as the sun, Sirius. They knew that Sirius is the star of Isis. This is what has been remembered from those times, but I tell you, I, Isis, am Sirius. I am incarnate as the sun, Sirius. So connect to me, to my abundance, to my motherhood dimensions. There's a lot of healing of the divine masculine, as you can see here. There are two things I'm seeing, and it's not either one of them either the other, it's both. One of them is 
the divine feminine is healing the divine masculine and the other is the other way around. Thing is that the divine feminine is is already pregnant with a purple I heard. <laughs> a purple a purple dream, a voice, a vision. You're bringing it into reality and it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. And the divine masculine, when he comes to you, he's able to himself have some nourishing attitude in some way, his own way, and to just offer you that protection towards your vision of your vision. Because you share the same vision. And life restored. Priestess of the Phoenix. Resurrection, transformation. Again, the myth of Osiris. Resurrection, transformation. The sacred scarab goes for the sun. For the sunlight. There where the sun is. And... <laughs> Okay, this may be weird for some of you, but the way these are shaped here, they are like the, the antennas of my router. So this may be a message to you to be connected to the internet. Because there is something through it, about it. There is something, some kind of abundance emerging from it. You may be having an online business. It's just a thing of you being connected to the internet. It's also about sharing information, listening to info and sharing info and just staying connected. Maybe a lot of your friends are in many, many places and you need internet or just, oh, okay. It's you're receiving a lot of knowledge, a lot of enlightenment, you being the portal of the sun and distributing that to the world and making it public for as many people as possible. Obviously, you still need to, to live, so... It's, it's entirely normal to ask for money for that, for the service you're offering. But it's the thing of being connected to the internet. Even when you, when you go off, let's say, when you go somewhere, when you go wherever you're going, maybe you're a nomad, maybe you're on the move, just, just be connected to the internet. There is, there is news coming in in communication and a lot of communication about business with clients a lot of it so and I'm also sensing that this is going to happen from a very cozy place for you for example working from home or from again a very cozy place if cozy for you means being on the road <laughs> I know this kind of sounds paradoxical, but it, some people do have this. Some people are nomads. Some people just want to pack their things in the car and just hit the road. But whatever version of this applies for you, just stay connected. And there's a lot of cooperation. Your soul tribe is coming in your sisters and brothers of the light and a lot, a lot, a lot of sisters and brothers from the other dimensions, star seeds and angels, archangels, ascended masters, higher beings, whatever names you desire to give to the higher realms, Beings from this realm, these realms are with you and assisting you at this point. And in many, many places, in many, many areas and, and realms of your life and not just your life. It's, 
I, I see that they've been working to bring all of us together, all of us, the 144,000, and not only to bring all of us together, all those of us contributing to the ascension, manifesting the ascension of humankind. It's happening. We're being brought together in the physical, not just spiritually, but non-physically. No, it's happening in the physical where we'll be able to touch palms like this, like this, like, hi. <laughs> and meditate together and hug one another and kiss one another and rejoice in one another's presence because we're all one. And it is the time that all those who are aware that we're all one, we do actually come together physically which is beautiful. And again, say like the thing of being connected so that we may come together physically. And I also sense that some of you, you're going to, maybe some of you are pregnant on the road and you're going to deliver and in your birth, like, when you give birth, you're going to be assisted by some sisters and brothers of the light. First, I heard brothers. So, you're going to have help. And this is beautiful. Did you see the orb? This is so beautiful. I'm so grateful for all the higher beings being present. And all the beings, the higher beings being present as per their human incarnations. I love you. I want to cry. Goddess of 10,000 names, endless emanations of the priestess, Isis. Multidimensionality. We're coming together. There are things happening. There are many, many things happening. And again, we're being brought together. All the forces of the universe are working to, to bring us together. I see this. I hear that. I sense it. I feel it. Wow. And again, mothers, there are going to be very many of us as mothers. Or maybe just me giving birth and all my sisters being mothers for the same child. Which is beautiful. I love this. I love this. And like we're going to discover that we're so much like one another. It's just, it's just amazing. It's brotherhood and sisterhood. And... All of these connections are going to bring a lot of patience, I heard. Patience and impatience, somehow. And I was about to say that all of these connections are going to bring further understanding of the personal being. In the personal self's multidimensionality, I love the word. Triumph of the goddess. So whatever you're going through, it's your it's triumph. But it's such a suave energy of, of such a well received triumph. It's a feminine, just a feminine, very feminine dimension here. And talismans again, again. Crystals. 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 <laughs> or rings. Just... Just any kind of... Uh, talismans. Any kind of talismans of potency to work with. Even Sero cards, divination cards, are talismans. 
a divination deck, a cartomancy deck, runes as well, written on stones. Anything, anything, any any piece that you can wear on yourself that you assign a special meaning to. You may also work with astrologers who create talismans according to certain spiritual phases, astrological phases. One such astrologer is Krasi Atasio. Her K-R-A-S-I A-T-A-S-S-I-O Krasi Atasio. She's a Bulgarian astrologer. She's very much attentive to the phases of each planet and she creates talismans for each kind of energy. She's very knowledgeable and you yourself it's I sense this um, about you creating your own talismans according to moon phases especially moon phases Jupiter or the planet you're most connected to generally so I feel like This is the the reading for you. Obviously, for more personal, in-depth messages, contact me. And further spiritual teachings and working together as well. I love you, babies. Go shine and come shine. Hello, Devon babies. Welcome to your reading. You were attracted to this beautiful, beautiful pink flower. I just love it. I love it so much. Look how beautiful it is. Look how beautiful it looks like. And the smell. Oh, the perfume of it. Mmm. Mmm. It was 28 seconds into this segment, into this reading. I felt like mentioning it. It might be relevant to some. 28 may be a reoccurring synchronicity for you. And 50, 51, and 50... 50 something. 50 something. I don't feel it. But 50, any kind of 50, 50 something. Thing is that with you, there is something that has been requiring some, as you can see here, proper burial for freedom, sacrifice to Osiris, Lord of the Dead. You may feel called to work with the faces of the sun and the moon. You may feel called to work with either full moons or new moons or both or quarter moons, whether it be first quarter or last quarter. Just any way you feel attracted, you feel called to work with the moon. Thing is that by working with the moon, you instantly work with the sun as well because the moon receives her light from the sun. And whenever the moon is in one of her known phases she makes an aspect to the sun whether it be a conjunction an opposition just it's it's very important i'm hearing to us to pay attention to the moon in your birth chart I don't want to say squares for the moon, but just in any way the moon shows up in your birth chart, pay attention to that. And the cycles of the moon and the transits of the moon, and it's very useful to make, to take advantage of the phases of the moon 
you have the dark mysteries enter the chamber of the dark goddess. So there is healing happening and above this, it was pyramid of light. Step your vibration deeper into love. So as much as in this card, you see light and darkness, night and day, we have light and night. Well, not night, it says dark chamber, so light and dark. And this card also wanted its come up. Key of life, spinning the ankh, the key of life. Okay, and this other card here, Rising Sun, the Divine Solar Child Reborn, Horus being the, the embodiment of the balance between masculine and feminine because he is the son of the Divine Masculine Osiris and the Divine Feminine Me Isis. Now, the reading in itself for you. Thing is that you had this blank card here. And this shows to me that there is right now you've got the opportunity to write it yourself. Your life, this next step in your life, you have the opportunity to write it yourself. Up until this point, there have been many, many changes and many, many phases and many, many events that were not so much up to your free will. There were many things happening that were out of your control. But right now, what is happening right now in the coming months? For some, it's going to be two months. For some, it's like two months from now. And after these two months, you're going to see the full impact of that. And you're going to have even more power, even more control. But not control in the bad meaning of control. It's like control in... Well, let's not use the word control. Like power, ability to manifest will, to free will, ability to, to create something yourself, how you want it for yourself by yourself and with this i would end up reading right here because you already know and i feel like this is the major theme for you and this is majorly what you needed to hear like the confirmation you you needed to hear in order to keep going because you are on the right track and you have no idea how much you are even though you think you're not. Even though you... This is the thing. It's a blank card, okay? You don't know too much. You may not know anything at all. You may not know... <gasps> Whoa! Okay. So, thing is that with events in the past, you might have been getting confirmations, dreams, intuition, messages, anything that was kind of giving you a feeling or a knowing of some sorts about how things would unfold in the coming days, weeks, months. But now you're not receiving that much because right now it's up to your free will. It's up to you. You're making it. You're writing it. It's a blank card. You are writing it. And look, Above it, it's another blank card. But it's like right now you're writing the foundation, which is not that you're writing it now. You had written it already in the past, especially in the past months or maybe even year when things have been going apparently in anyone else's way other than your own. But that was... It was kind of like a training for you and kind of like a, a moment for you to build this foundation. And... 
Right now it feels like an unknown territory. It feels like something unknown is going to happen. But that's because you have it in your hands. And as I said, you can do whatever you want with this. Okay, this is so very beautiful. And we have flower of life, divine creativity and manifestation. And the card, yes, is below it. And it seems like a, a reverse, but it's, a, it's like that, you know. It's, it's an ascension. It is an ascension to a higher, a higher vibration, a higher vibration of your physical reality as well. And then we have their magic and ritual, crafting sacred practice. I sense that whatever you've been practicing in the past months, continue to do it. Continue to do it. Baby, just look. Just look. Just look how they are. Do you see? Phew. Phew. It's, it's energy. It's in steps. And it's like arrows. You have focus. And I feel like this whole thing in the past, in the recent past, has been building up so that you can build this focus. So that you can gather all of your focus on this right now. On this manifestation. And it may be like... It's a, it's a big manifestation. It, it, it's, as I said, the, the foundation of, a, of the life you want. It's like in the past months you've been digging the hole for this foundation and now you're pouring the, the foundation in itself. You're putting the rock there, the big rock of the foundation. And I get this feeling like this, this allegory of, you see, it, it, it took long because it had to be like, like a... As I said, like digging the hole in the ground for the foundation. And it took long, very long, because the foundation for what you build is, is very big, because what you build is very big. And now this manifestation is coming in as one solid rock, like your whole foundation doesn't come in bits. It comes as one solid rock. Whoa. Beautiful, powerful. And as I said, it's... You're going to receive a no. About... I asked, is it about a job offer? And I heard yes and no. So it's <laughs> it's yes and no, and I, it's it is weird. But please bear with me with this one because it's it makes sense what I heard. So it's you don't have that much clarity at this point. But whatever choice you take at this point. It is right. <laughs> I know how it sounds. I, I know how weird it sounds. But it is right. Just whatever choice you make at this point, it is right. You have all the freedom. Wow, it's beautiful. Wow. Oh. Okay, now, as you can see, in terms of 
seed, soul seed consciousnesses. We've got Heda, Beta Centauri, Gaia and Saren, both surface and inner earth, Pleiadian, Maldek, parallel other dimensions, other universes, Mintaka, Orion, and Sirian. And very beautifully, I found that the third, I think it was the third card. No, the first. The first card coming out of the deck was Lady of the Stars, Priestess of Sirius. So this is very powerful. Some blueprints are maybe with you as well, or you may have blueprinter memory. It, I have a feeling you'll know what this means for you. Those of you for whom this is, for whom this is applicable, it you'll you already know what this means. Those of you who don't resonate with this, it's okay. Just just keep this thing. But those of you who feel it, it, it's like you already know the, the message meant with this. Now, as many of you saw, kind of like almost in the middle of the reading, we have karmic soulmate and twin flame. But then we have self-love here. So what happens is that it's like this whole thing of the karmic soulmate twin flame situation. There's been a no in this area. And the no in this area had to be so that there could be the huge yes in the area of self-love. And... Oh, 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 so you see it, Venus, okay? It's, it, it's no coincidence that Venus is right above this. You see? And then we have the scales of balance, ancient tantra of the soul. And then we have init initiation, spiritual testing of Ra and Lady Isis. What I sense is that your divine counterpart, whether you perceive them as a soulmate, as a twin flame, had to go through some things during this time because it is the initiation for them. And you yourself had to go through this kind of loneliness in order to achieve your self-love in so very powerful ways. So very powerful and you may be having a soulmate at this point, whether they appeared recently or reappeared, you may know them from the past, or they will appear in like three days or something. And this soulmate... So there are two cases. For some of you, it's a soulmate. For some of you, you have your twin flame, but right now there's a soulmate. And this soulmate for both cases is from a parallel, either they are from, from a parallel dimension for real, either they just seem to be like from a parallel, parallel world. But if they seem like that... Uh, they most probably are somehow. Or just a parallel version of Earth. In any case, they'll just be parallel to, to the whole way this world is like, the whole mainstream, the whole major part of society, that whole thing. I'm getting that the, the Divine Masculine in this situation has been going through this initiation so that he's able to write his own destiny too. Because he's got the blank card too. And 
because his yes were, was turned upside down and because he was meant to see that and see where his joy, where his flower of life lies, where his creativity is and what his manifestations should be about. <laughs> so it's about balance. As you can see with the skills of balance, and as you may know from a lot of teachings about Twin Flames, union comes when you have union within. So it's been a, a trial for the both of you lately to achieve your own balance within. Whew. Now I sense this. It, it's been a kind of a war situation that had to put you in front of a no. There were some blockages. And because of, a, of the way the, this world is, the Gaian nature is like, now, those of you wondering about the karmic of your twin flame. They are very much about a Gaian way that is uh, eh, like a uh. but He's realizing stuff and this whole karmic deal is part of the burial process that he is doing, that the divine masculine is doing. Now again with Pleiadian and Maldic here, it's like feminine nuances, masculine nuances. It's um... It's a thing of obviously he couldn't see the right choice. But even his wrong choice, which was the karmic choice, was a right choice at that time. Because it would be the it would bring about the destruction of his old paradigms. And realize where he was going wrong and how things are parallel. What is parallel to what? And again, put him in the right yes. And understand that, understand love, just love. You as well understand love. Now with Syrian and Orion, Mintaka being from Orion, I will not read them as part of the story here. I read them as simple presences because these are the divine feminine, divine masculine constellations of the galaxy that like central. So it's normal for them to be here, especially in a twin flame situation reading where there is divine feminine divine masculine you might have been attracted to the previous pile as well if not don't worry i said this because of these two cards which came out in that pile as well it's again multi-dimensionality and with you it's seeable through all of these Consciousnesses of star seed of, of soul origin. Oh, by the way, there is life on Venus too. It's not just about Venus being present as, you know, as an astrological presence. There, there is life on Venus too. There is humanity on Venus. They are very different. Not that much as 
let's say, another species entirely. But they are different, meaning that they did not have, a, you know, some things. So, a very powerful way for you to manifest is to work with talismans of potency charging sacred objects of power. Whether those be ones, um, jewels with stones or just sacred metals, tarot cards, divination cards, symbols, crystals of any sorts. Even stones, runes written on stones or on wood pieces or a wood piece with a sacred symbol on it or just anything you find as a talisman, anything you can invest sacred intention in and then wear it on you, that's a talisman. So anything that you find fitting for yourself as a talisman, Wear that and work with that. <laughs> Red coral. And rose quartz. <laughs> and this is silver. Okay. So. Oh, by the way, I, I only wear silver currently as a metal. And I would advise you if you want this advice to to wear this kind of metal or gold or just a sacred metal okay so this has been the reading for you it's balance and remember every choice you make right now is the right choice. I love you. Hello my babies, my beautiful babies, welcome to this reading. You are attracted to the beautiful, beautiful pink rose. And all my babies, I just tell you the smell, the fragrance, the perfume of it. <gasps> divine, 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 divine. I saw 20 seconds on the recording of this reading and 20 may be a significant synchronicity for you. Or maybe someone could have life path number 20. Maybe a person who has life path number 20 could be significant for you or for you with this reading or something like that. Or maybe they, they are manifesting you or you are manifesting something with them or a manifestation of yours will involve them as well. Sooner or later, one way or another. Now, the first two cards that came were the Nine of Cups and the Ten of Cups. So we already have an an evolution. It's the Nine of Cups and then the Ten of Cups. It's it's spiritual fulfillment and emotional fulfillment on your own. And it's the, the card of Jupiter in Pisces. So it's benevolent. It's, as you can see, spiritual teacher, powerful placement. It's about pleasures and creativity. It's about wishes coming true. This card is called the Lord of Happiness. Also, it gives very mystical people, very mystical abilities. And it's the card of the... Sephiroth called Foundation. If you don't know, every card of the Tarot in the Minor Arcana is associated with something called Sephiroth. And the, the, the name of this Sephiroth is Foundation, which is the foundation of the material world. So it's about... 
a parenthesis for those of you curious what a sephiroth is it's a node in a geometric structure called the tree of life in Kabbalah is not the tree of life from the Norse mythology. This is the tree of life from the Norse mythology, okay, which is represented as an actual tree. The tree of life from Kabbalah is simply a geometric shape, a geometric depiction of some abstract worlds. And the Sephiroth in there are the nodes of certain ways, certain bridges of energy flow. And the ninth one is called the foundation of the physical world, whereas the tenth is the, f the manifestation of the physical world. It's called the kingdom. So it's about manifestations. And primarily it's about you. All of those manifestations required you to be in a spiritual position of happiness, of content, of joy. You may have very powerful presences with you spiritually, very powerful friends. Also, if you feel at some point that there are, you know, almost threatening like presences it may be because the angels archangels ascended masters or even the one creator god goddess present with you the energy you feel is so intense that the human part of you will perceive it as unknown and what is unknown is terrifying. But don't confuse this with other kind of, of feelings, you know, about the non-physical. Um, just moments when you, when you sense someone being there without malevolent intent, without doing you harm. It's just just a terrifying kind of presence because of simply power because the fact that they are powerful but powerful but if you allow yourself to tune in you will sense they are friends and they will not harm you and i want to cry at this point they love you so this may be a message for many of you to stop being scared of your own spirit guides <laughs> this is beautiful Now, coming back to the message, we have Jupiter in Pisces and then Mars in Pisces. So, oh, by the way, right now when I'm recording this, this is obviously a timeless reading, but when I'm recording this, Jupiter is in Aries right after Pisces. So Jupiter has been in Pisces for a while and so did Mars. Currently, Mars is still in Pisces, but it will get in Aries soon. When I'm recording this, Venus, Jupiter are in Pisces, Chiron, uh, blah, sorry, in, in Aries, Chiron as well. And Mars is going to join them too, very soon. So, I sense this as being a very synchronistic message your manifestations are going to come to closure, I heard. Maybe there's a thing about closure here. You're manifesting some kind of closure. Clo closure of a chapter of... of... It's like you want to end so many things at once all of them at once, like one cut, all of them, one cut to cut them all, <laughs> beautiful, and thing is that all of these manifestations which come to fruition as one big manifestation, 
couldn't be achieved without you being in a space of spiritual fulfillment on your own first, like in the first place. And then your manifestations happen as well. And it's the thing of these manifestations happening through the way of you being the spiritual warrior. Now, it's, it's a thing of you, you've been trying to balance two worlds in many ways, many episodes, like maybe in your life you've had episodes of good karma, bad karma, which may not necessarily be your karma. You might have just inherited it from your family. And it's like financially, for example, you've been having ups and downs and then again ups and downs. But I feel like the the ups have been more ethereal, more ephemeral than the downs. Or at least that's how you felt it. And it's been hurting you a lot, a lot. And for some of you, this was also applicable to the emotional realm. Now, what I sense here is that you've been offered some things, but you had your own offer for yourself. It's like, it's like this. People have been offering you things and you refused because you have your cup already full with your own offer to yourself, which comes from spirit. And it's the way these flow together very beautifully. You know what to manifest and how to manifest. And it's very good that you For as long as you feel it is right to refuse all those offers coming from other people, do it. But when you feel like it is right, obviously do it. It's a thing of what you feel. At some points with some people, in some circumstances, you may feel like some offers are right and other times they are not. So it's a thing of weighing, knowing how to weigh situations, knowing how to intuit what is for you and what is not for you. And also kind of bring intuition and, uh, I was about to say, manifestation together. So maybe this has meaning. Obviously it has meaning. But what I was wanting to say is that it's about bringing intuition and analysis, thought analysis into the scheme like together. It was 11.33, 11 minutes, 33 seconds. Again, synchronicity. It's... Love, 
you're manifesting through love, you're manifesting through emotions, you're manifesting through being well emotionally. And when you are fulfilled emotionally, your emotions come to pass, I heard, and things start happening. So, in order for your manifestations to happen, you must be in a place of tranquility first. Now, you've got the world as bottom of the deck energy and this is a very powerful omen. It's the end of a chapter. The end of a big, 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 big chapter of your life. It could be the end of poverty. It could be the end of poverty consciousness that you inherited from your family and now you're putting an end to that. And I felicitate you for doing so. It's like... Remember when I said that there is also someone involved in your manifestation? Whether you want it or not. There is, this is a very fiery person, very ambitious. Like when they want something, they'll do it. Now, if this is the divine counterpart and they're not answering, don't wait around for them. Because when they want something, they'll do it. Now, they've been having a lot of this. And so did you. But it's an irreversible end happened between the two of you. And it hit them. It hurt them. They may be Gemini. Or things may be shifting during this Gemini season. And... There are many things I'm getting with the moon card here. Things may be happening in July. Okay. Also, night time. For a very long time, the night time has been a time of, of sorrow and repeating negative thought patterns. But there's been a walking away from that at some point. And I heard m at many points in your life. And there's a lot of Pisces energy in this reading. A lot of spiritual energy. And I heard a lot of recycling of energy, of old energies, waiting to pass. It's like you're waiting to pass. Or, or maybe they are waiting to pass, kind of like an exam or something, whether it be a real exam or more likely a spiritual exam. Or it could be an examination that they must undergo of their own. But they want something badly, like they want it really, really badly. And they're gonna come in with a ton of communication at the right time, like when the time is right. I heard night, night time, very long night time. And it's like they're going to come in in a hurry towards you. And something given, like, something given more is going to end then. Even more, even more powerfully. Wow. And do you see this is the knight and this is the princess of wands. And then we have the princess and the knight of air of sorts it's like there's been a deceptive energy between the two of you this energy being inherited being karmic being a subconscious programming from the parents being karmic partners society false beliefs whatever even distance And
it's like something someone was kind of trying to cheat themselves and then they hurt themselves and then they hurt themselves and started attacking their own self in the right way in order to cut off the bad pattern And thing is, the world card is ruled by Saturn. And this card as well is Saturn in Pisces, the Eight of Cups. So wherever you have Saturn in your chart, that's when where your manifestations are coming to go, are, are coming to pass, are coming to, to manifest. But because it is Saturn, it offers delays. Very big delays and challenges, obstacles, and you've been having some, baby. And I don't know who this was for, either you, either your divine counterpart, either both. But it's more like one of the two counterparts said this to the other. Or both. Like, it's like, spiritually, it, you know, the, the non-incarnate part of, of the divine counterpart knows that you've been having some. Like, whoa. And this this goes both ways both partners know about the other about their challenges their whatever this you've been having some means like a lot of challenges but it's important to know when to say no and when to say yes Probably this has been the trial lately, the lesson. I stopped the video because I wanted to sneeze, but it was a false alarm. And I, 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 I felt like, and now I realize, I, I am touching the necklace that I'm wearing and it's got a lapis lazuli stone and I'm touching the neck I was touching the necklace and kind of going with the fingers on it you know and lapis lazuli is all about communication so it's like you've been there was some kind of communication needing to happen at some point and it's been delayed very much but it's like this person owing it to the other to communicate to them is like just like my sneeze wants to give signals that they would that, that they will but they don't Which is bad. It's, it's horrid. Now, all I advise you, and it's more from personal experience, keep going with your passions. Stay true to your beliefs. And just keep going with your passions. Don't let anything nor anyone sit in the way of your well-being. And I don't know if you heard that sound, but something just clicked. And it's confirmation. Just keep going with your dreams, with your vision. Know that your soul tribe is coming in. Your soul tribe. Your vision and your passions. It's like uniting both air and fire 
and building your empire together, I heard. <laughs> building your empire together, okay. But... This together could also mean, let's say, your divine counterparts not there physically. Spiritually, they are. And more so, you are them. So the more together you are with yourself, I'm not gonna say the more you're, 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 you're able to attract them because I don't want to put you in the repetitive thought patterns of waiting for them and going in the same direction of why is this not happening? Why are they not doing anything? Why is this reunion being delayed and stuff like that? I'm telling you, be together with yourself simply to be together with yourself. And don't give a shit about the little shit who's unable to admire you, to respect you, to cherish you the way you deserve to. Just follow your passions and be your own dharma. Dharma means justice of the soul. With this, I'll end the reading. It was 23 minutes and 33 seconds. Divine synchronicity, babies. Those of you who want to work with me, my email is in the description below. And those of you who want to donate, my Revolut is there as well. And I thank you so very much for doing so. I love you so very much. Go shine and come shine, my babies.